Your reasons for listening to this show, well, those are your own. But just keep in mind that the views, information, or opinions expressed on the Tuttle Daily Podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of our sponsors. Yeah, it's called free speech, people. Nobody's forcing you to listen. Get ready for your daily dose of Tuttle. Uh, the all-time greatest uh, intern slash producer we've ever had, of course, Tuttle. Tuttle in Florida. From the Hobo Fish Camp, it's the Tuttle Daily Podcast. No wonder nobody likes you, Tuttle. Everything's a goddamn debate. Greetings and welcome to another edition of the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hope you guys have been enjoying your day so far. If you get a chance, go to my YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell button. Because when you hit that bell button, you're going to get alerted to any time I go live or put up any brand new content. The web address you need to go to is youtube.com slash Tuttle. Also, let me get into the content because I, I got some very important things that I got to talk about. Check out my sponsor, Ian Hanna, ianhannahomes.com. If you're in the market to buy or sell a home, or even if you know somebody that's in the market to buy or sell a home, use out my good friend, Ian Hanna. I talked about this, that my mom is actually looking to buy uh, a brand new place. And I'm going to get her uh, in contact with Ian. Because that's, uh, look, you know how they used to have that hair club for men thing? Where the guy was like, not only am I the president, I'm a client as well. Well, I mean, that's what I want to do because I've been telling you about Ian Hanna, ianhannahomes.com. And I'm going to use them because my mom's getting all stressed out. She really doesn't know what to do. Worried about every little detail. And he said, don't stress out. I got a good friend, Ian Hanna at ianhannahomes.com. So if you're in the market to buy or sell a house in the Brevard, Volusia, or Flagler areas, check out my good friend, Ian Hanna at ianhannahomes.com. So I found out yesterday. And I briefly touched on this on my YouTube live stream last night. And then I, I wanted to check with my producer, Vulture. And Vulture said, he gave me the okay. I guess he maybe talked to somebody from Tom and Dan. But this Friday, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be appearing, I think, on their Friday free show with Tom and Dan. With a mediocre time with Tom and Dan. I talked about this. Uh, one of their one of their employees, Butler, ended up quitting because he was looking at messages that he shouldn't have been looking at, and I guess he got his feelings hurt, and he quit. And before the body was even cold, I was like, I gotta jump on this. And now somebody's uh trying to bite my style, or thinks that he's better than me. And he's not. I, I've talked about this. I, everybody thinks this radio thing is easy. Everybody thinks podcasting is easy. Now, the thing with podcasting, anybody, any amateur can do it. But it's not good. It's not good at all. I talked about how Dr. Dan on Bubba's show being on there or any of the Do Diaco brothers. I've talked about this. Like, I wouldn't go in and tell them how to practice law or how uh, Dr. Dan puts in a fake uh, pair of breasts because he is a cosmetic surgeon. He's a doctor. But everybody thinks, oh, I can just come in there and I can be this radio guy. Everybody, everybody thinks that people have got to hear their opinion, and they really, really don't. They, they cannot relate with them. But on Friday, I guess, because I wanted to apply for it. And see, the thing is, is I, I could easily undercut them because I, I'm making money here on the podcast, but I also don't want to do that. I could undercut because they want me to go against Seth Petrozelli, the silverback. They call him the silverback gorilla. I don't know why, but. Seth Petrozelli, if you don't know who Seth Petrozelli is, he's the guy that first was the first one to beat Kimbo Slice. He is a mixed martial art fighter, 
in the MMA. And he ended up beating Kimbo Slice. And I I have nothing but kind words to say about Seth Petrozelli. He he's always been kind to me. I think he's funny. Because he, he is like an adult frat boy. Because nobody nobody's gonna tell Seth Petrozelli. Like they used to go out and dress in the weirdest type of stuff in downtown Orlando, just just waiting and daring for people to say something because nobody would. Everybody thought Kimbo Slice was the baddest, baddest mother effer out there. And he really wasn't. He was a paper tiger. And since everybody thought he was so good, and Seth went in there and knocked him out wearing pink hair, everybody's like, oh my God, this Seth Petrozelli is the baddest mother effer. No. Maybe, maybe Kimbo Slice just had a lot of hype to him. And Seth ended up just reaping the benefits from it. But, I mean, where where is Seth now? If his MMA career was doing so well, then why is he trying to get a job on Tom and Dan's show? And that's not a dig at Tom and Dan. And I'm not trying to say I have an ego, but there's no way some meathead like Seth Petrozelli is going to be able to, like, even hang with me when it comes to radio broadcasting skills. It's just it's just not going to happen. Just like I wouldn't think that I could get in a ring with Seth Petrozelli and try to uh, fight him in an octagon. It, it's just not happening. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that everybody thinks that I'm going to be intimidated by Seth just because of his uh, physical abilities how he can knock out big black dudes. Because, it, I mean, seriously, that, that's what he's famous for, is, is beating Kimbo Slice. No, I'm not, I'm not scared of Seth. I'm going to go in there. And a lot of you guys would think that I'm going to take uh, this, uh, because it is like a job interview. I, I think it's down to me and Seth Petrozelli. I don't know why I keep saying his uh, full name. I'm just going to start saying Seth. But I, I'm going in there, and I'm not going to be scared. I'm not going to be scared at all. Yeah, Seth could kill me with his bare hands. But how, how can you threaten somebody that actually tried to kill himself? <laughs> it, 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 you, you really can't threaten me. What, are you going to beat me to death? Okay. I already tried that. Well, not try to beat myself to death, but I did try to end my life. So I'm I'm not going to be scared. I, I'm not scared of any physical threat. Because what's the worst thing that can happen in a physical altercation? They beat you to death. Yeah, guess what? Not afraid of that. Guess what else I'm not afraid of? Pain. So I'm going to be able to go in there because he, he really absolutely holds no power over me. I'm not going to go in there and be any different. I'm just going to be myself. You know what? I'm not going to be myself. I'm going to, I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to try and knock him out like he did Kimbo Slice with my words. Because I, I know it. I know that I can do it. Come on. I mean, now, am I saying that if they left this up to a vote that I would win? No. Because a lot of people don't like me. They don't. But I just know for sure when it comes to what what type of stuff that that Tom and Dan need, that I could easily make their lives that much easier. And they wouldn't even have to train me. I mean... They could tell me, like, because it does differ from radio show or podcast show to another. But, I mean, it, it's it's just basic stuff. So, they're going to have to tell me exactly how they like things and stuff. And you might have to, like, explain a lot of things to Seth. Because he does probably have a thick head. And it's going to take him a little bit of time to be able to catch up and learn things. 
And it's not going to be that way with me. I'm, I'm going to be able to hit the ground running. And I don't know. I, I know that I'm also a liability. I know they got a, they got a great business running. You got corporate Tom. You know what? I probably shouldn't even talk about that uh, because this is a job interview. That was, you know what? I'm not even working smart right now because I'm already saying things. But Tom, a.k.a. Drunky the Bear, has changed a little bit. He has. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like, I always talk about radio people and, and podcasters having to evolve. And this is his business now. And, and Tom is the uh, Tom Van business man. So he, he's in control of all the advertisement and stuff, which is a big, big deal. It took me a very, very long time in radio to figure that out, that you got to make the station or show money. Because if you're making money, you get away with a lot more. You really do. But I also know, like, I'm more versatile than, you know, what Seth can do. Knock people out. But they, I mean, maybe that's what they want. I don't, I don't know. Maybe uh, uh, Tom Van or Daniel has a stalker. And they want protection. And they're like, hey, let's get this guy to just work behind the scenes. That's a big meathead. By the way, Seth, you you wrestle you you grab men and wrestle around on a mat with men every single day. I don't know. Sounds a little closeted to me, which look. I I would support Seth Petra's deli if he was. Matter of fact, he would have been like would have been way more popular in uh MMA uh world if he was like just came out. Like I said, he knocked out Kimbo Slice wearing pink hair. He rolls around with men every single day on a mat. Probably has had dudes crotches in his face on a daily basis. And I, I'm definitely pro-homosexual, pro-lesbian, pro-transgender, pro-queer. And it sounds weird to say that word because it, it doesn't sound like the word that you would be able to use, but it, it is included in the LBGQT movement. Seth, what I'm trying to say is I think it would be, it would be beneficiary to your career because things might, might, must not be going that well for you, Seth. And once again, this is, this is not a thing with Tom or Dan. Maybe he likes the attention. I know he does have a business. I don't know if he still has that gym and everything over in Orlando. So maybe, maybe that's why he's wanting to do it. Maybe he's doing it for the same reason that I want to do it. Because he just wants to be able to promote things. Or maybe he, I don't know. Him and him and Tom have always had a kind of weird relationship or friendship with each other. I don't know. Back to rolling around on a mat with a bunch of dudes, knocking out black men with pink hair. I mean, come on, guys. Just, just read between the lines. That's all I'm saying. So I'll be uh, on Tom and Dan this Friday at noon. I'm assuming that it is the Friday free show. But I could use all your support. And if you guys uh, want to do any research for me or send me some inside info that I can use against Seth Petrozelli, I would love to get it from you. You can email me tuttle at gmail.com. That's Tuttle with two D's, T-U-D-D-L-E at gmail.com. Or you can leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044. I know a lot of people that actually listen to the Tuttle Daily Podcast, people that are supporters of the content I'm putting out. I know a lot of you guys don't have social media. I, I really wish I wasn't either because you can only take so much of uh, pictures of ceiling fans when people don't like you. I mean, that's basically the stuff I get. But the only reason I'm on social media is to be able to promote this stuff. And I rarely, 
I used to be that guy that would respond to the negative tweet because I, I just felt like I had to, but it's not the way Twitter works. A lot of these people that want to talk crap uh, probably have maybe five, ten followers at best. Nobody is seeing their stuff unless I'm actually showing it any attention or replying to it. But uh, why I was talking about social media, uh, if you don't follow me on any of my social media, then you wouldn't know that the interview that I did with Mr. Rock Riley on his podcast, The Rock Stops Here, he, he's been interviewing a lot of radio guys. I think he's talked to Manson before. And I don't want any of you guys to think that I went and I bashed Bub on this. No. I mean, I was very complimentary of him. And we we dwelled into my radio career and, and my time and all the crazy stuff that I did through the various shows that I've worked with through my my radio career and and it was really really interesting to to have what i think is a broadcasting legend in tampa rock riley he was on tv he's done radio he's like a dual threat because a lot of these radio guys can't do tv because you know uh, that old saying uh, you got a voice or a face for radio yeah i, I might fill in or fit into that category but I, I've known Rock. I'm, I'm a big fan of just broadcasters in general. And, you know, my last 10 years in Tampa, it was, it was great to be able to finally meet him, sit down. I had him on my show to talk about the Florida-Florida State game. But if you want to find it, just go to iTunes and search The Rock Stops Here. It is the newest episode that he has posted. Uh, I haven't done this in a while. I did a little more poop ASMR, and if it's the first time that you're listening to the show or maybe you've never heard it, we live in a fifth wheel. We live in a hobo fish camp. There's a lot of RVs, but this is a fifth wheel, and a lot of people leave their septic tanks open all the time, and a lot of people don't know that it causes a lot of issues. You want the water and the fecal matter and all the other good stuff to soak in that water. And you want the gravity to do the work. You want that tank to be filled up. And I've been doing this. I don't even know if you guys even like it. I don't think any other podcasters done it or any other radio people have done it. Because I don't know how many uh, podcasters or content providers are going to uh, self-gloss or self-gloss on uh, living in a fifth wheel and having to dump the shitter uh, once every two weeks, but this was definitely a good one. You can tell that I've, I've got it all drained out because it, it's running really, really smooth now, and you can't hear all the chunky bits that maybe hasn't dissolved as much as the other stuff that's been sitting in there, but this was a really, really good one. I, I think it is. All right, guys, I got to be a little bit quiet. I, I was actually supposed to do this yesterday. And if you remember on yesterday's show, I talked about having problems with the uh, management here. And I didn't empty out the black water tank. I've, I've done this a couple of times on the show. But I, I've got a lot of great feedback about it. it. It's almost like redneck poop ASMR. And I'm going to empty out the tank now and let you guys hear all the liquid going through the pipe. Going over here to all right so i pulled the lever i pulled the lever oh yeah it's running i can already hear it going through the pipes listen to this seriously if you guys think this sucks i i would definitely love to give your feedback but i gotta tell you that that is a pretty good flow you can tell that i got it in tip-top working condition because that stuff is running like a goddamn NASCAR car. NASCAR car? NASCAR? Yeah. It, it sounds weird even when I say it. But it's a good flow. But if you guys hate this and think it's dumb, all right, please let me know. Email me, Tuttle at gmail.com or leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044.
this is what the pandemic has brought me to, if I'm just being honest, because, you know, not many people would get all excited or be proud of how well their shitter drains out of their fifth wheel or RV. One of the reasons we it wasn't draining as well as it was was because the uh, lift station that it all goes to must have been stopped up or was not working. Because it, it used to just, it used to just be like mud coming out of there. And sometimes we would get stuff, not backup. We've had one backup. It was, it was poop water, but it wasn't like fecal matter. I'm sure there was some fecal matter in the water that, because I woke up, put my feet on the floor, and it was wet. It was wet all over the place. And it did, the water had backed up into it. Luckily, none of the the uh, chunky pieces came out. I ended up having to go and buy, or not buy, I rented one of those uh, steam cleaners that you can get from Winn-Dixie. They do work pretty well, but I, I'm really, really proud of this because I, I really don't have much of a life anymore. I just work out uh, and and do this podcast for you guys. So, yeah, of course, I'm going to take a little pride and how much my fecal matter runs out of the pipe down into the lift station. Sorry. Call me boring. You guys might think this bit sucks, but I like it. Now, you're going to start hearing the chunky stuff here. You hear how the sound is a little bit more solid? All right, you can, you can actually tell when the freshly laid logs are making their way into the lift station because you, you can. You're, you're hearing mostly water right there, but now you can actually hear some of the solider pieces moving through the line down into the ground. And, th I mean, some of you guys might, you know, some people do listen to, like, rain falling on a roof, especially a tin roof. I, I loved it when it rained. It was better than any uh, Xanax bar that I've ever taken in my life, any NyQuil or Tylenol PM. When I lived in De Leon Springs, we, we had a manufactured home. It was kind of ass backwards. We, we lived in a, uh, you, would, you would expect somebody that lived in a double wide, they would have an above ground pool. No, hell no. We were fancy white trash. We, we had an in-ground pool. And, but we had a tin roof over the top of the double wide that we lived in. And, and it just sounded so good. It would put me out like a light switch. Oh, slowing down on the back stretch. You know how archaeologists, they, they'll dig down and they can tell you, like, how old a fossil is just by the different layers of uh, sediment? And then you got sand, like more darker soil, and then like a clay, and then you get down into sh some shell. It, it, this this poop pipe draining the uh, shitter is kind of like looking back in time. You can almost hear and remember what you ate on a particular day as it's going through the pipe. Like, because I can tell that we had steak and eggs that night towards the end because. You can hear it. It's a little bit more solid. I was eating a lot of fiber on that day as well, too. So you're you're hearing a little bit more of a solid matter going through there. It, it's less water and more solid form getting towards the end. You, you can definitely hear the fresher stuff. <laughs> now, that, that last little part right there just sounded like a cow. Taking a big dump on a flat rock. My dad my dad used to say that all the time. When it was raining, he was like, yeah, it's like a cow pissing on a flat rock. 
Or he would say, it's, it's like raining, like pouring piss out of a boot. I know. Very, very Southern. But it's something that I'll always remember. It is. Uh, the good old times. I was going through some voicemails last night. I, I always like to do that the night before, if I do have any in. By the way, they've, they've kind of been a little slow, if I'm just being honest. Like, I, I'm not trying to call you guys out, but I, I'm going to show you an example of somebody calling me out. And I'm not going to reveal their identity. not going to give out their email or phone number or anything. Because I, I do, like I said earlier, uh, when I was, used to be on social media, I felt like I had to just fight every troll or anybody that said anything negative about me. Now, there, there are some times that I will get upset when it's warranted. But I didn't, I didn't know this because I was trying to pull the voicemail and I could not do it. And I texted my producer, Vulture, and I was like, hey, I can't get this voicemail. Can you download it and send it to me? He was like, no, this is text. So I didn't know that you guys can actually text as well, too. And if you don't want to email or you don't want to leave your voice, you can, you can text me. On the same number, you can leave the voicemail, 407-270-3044. Now, with my OCD, ADHD, and all the just messed up things that are in my head, it, it was a simple text. It said, Tuttle, stop touching yourself. Now, I've been a lot more self-aware of what I do and how things could look. I, I've talked about this. I've been dealing with this hernia. And it's not really that bad because I've been taking it easy when I work out. Now, if I'm living, lifting any heavy weight, I, I don't use both hands unless I'm working my triceps. But when I'm when I'm curling or the you know doing bicep curls, I do. And and even when I'm doing my uh, my squats and stuff like that, I don't put my hand down my pants. Now I did at one time. I was doing that, but. The hernia is on the left side in the uh, growing area where, like, the leg connects with the trunk of your body. And it, it, I'm, look, I can see that's why I stopped doing it underneath the shorts. God, I, I must sound like a real creepo. Luckily, there are no young children in this part because then I would really look like a creep. But I started doing it, and I push it in. Like I said, it's not that bad. It doesn't hurt. But when I like when I'm like doing bicep curls, like I said, I will keep it pushed in where I'm not straining and my guts just pop out of my my abdomen. I I definitely don't want that to happen. And that's why I think it might be somebody in the park. Because I I just don't randomly touch my uh crotch out in public cuz I do I do work outside underneath the tree, so I don't know. Could it be the guy that owns the Hobo Fish Camp? But I, I really don't think so. I mean, he's not really that great with technology as well. But it could be somebody here in the park. Like, who would, why would they write that? And if you guys have any ideas of uh, something I could be mixing uh, that text up with, please let me know. I, I would definitely love to hear from him because that, that's the only thing I could think of when they were talking about, when they texted, Tuttle, stop touching yourself. That That's very specific. But a lot of people here in the park don't know me as Tuttle either. I think they have an idea that that's my, like, pseudonym name, or I don't even know if that's the right word. I'll go with it. But a lot of people around here don't even know me. As, they just know me as Patrick. They don't know me as Tuttle. So I wonder if I was touching myself somewhere. I mean, as a guy, when somebody tells you to stop touching yourself, uh, you automatically go to, hey, stop touch touching your your crotch, your your testicles, and your penis. Because at a very young age, it does get ingrained into us. We we're always like, uh, when you first discover your penis a as a kid as a young boy or a young teenager, and 
Okay, I mean, it, it's not like you didn't know it was there. But you start discovering. You start, like, playing with it a little bit more. Oh, don't even get me started on the first time that I actually um, orgasmed. Because, man, oh, man, I was like, oh, what did I do wrong? Because you, you got to remember that this was before the age of where everybody had internet or a computer at home, because my first interaction with computers was at school. And and they were really, really crappy computers. That That's the thing about Gen Xers. We, there was a, we had to spend a good amount of time in our, in our early years without, like, the internet and home computers and stuff. How much easier would our lives have been if we would have had Google to be able to just research things? Now, there would be still be misinformation that you would get all the time off the Internet because there is a lot of misinformation on the Internet. But most of the information you got when you were a young kid was just your friends just giving you the worst misinformation, confuses the hell out of you. And I did. I, I did think that I broke my penis the first time I was messing around with it and it went off. Yeah, I know that it felt good, <laughs> but yeah, it it was a little scary the first time. I'm just just throwing it out there. So if that text message did come from uh, somebody in the Hobo Fish camp, uh, message delivered, message received, and I I, I guess I got to start like wrapping that thing up with a ace bandage so I don't have to like look like a creepo pushing in my hernia while I'm trying to work out. This story is a, I don't know, probably about a week old. And I, I've just had a lot of content, uh, thanks to Vulture, for setting up a, a lot of the last two interviews that I did. And I got a lot more coming down the, the pipeline. And I, I just found this story interesting. I know back in the day, like, when I was younger, my dad, pretty much all the friends and any of the neighbors, well, closest neighbor was five miles away, but there there were certain people that my dad knew, but maybe wasn't, like, good friends with them. But there was also this understanding that if that friend or, or acquaintance my dad knew, my my dad would not care, like, if that person, to a point, I not just beat the ever-living crap out of me, but... If I was doing something dumb, like, my dad even gave the principal, like, permission to paddle me if I got out of hand. And our principal, he took that stuff serious. He had a paddle with a bunch of holes in it, so it cut down on wind resistance. But the reason I, I want to play this story is because I want to ask you guys, because I do want to hear from you. Email me, Tuttle at gmail.com or leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044 because uh, there was this big fight at this, I guess, trampoline business. You can go out there, bounce around. I would love to know what their insurance is like. You, would, you wouldn't think little kids, and I, I'm sure, I don't even know if they have an age limit. They're, I knew there were parents there. I wonder how many like older people go to the trampoline place and just completely blow out their ACLs because I mean, there are some pretty violent like bounces. And do you guys remember, uh, it, speaking of insurance, how do people even have trampolines back in the day in their backyard? Because that was always an accident waiting to happen. And I, I was the nerd back in the day. I, I would get picked on. And if you fell down on a trampoline, the other bigger kids that you're hanging out with would do that popcorn thing. They would do that bounce stuff, and they would just, like, toss you all around. How many of you guys you know, almost broke your ankle getting it, like, twisted in the springs? How many people b got bounced off the trampoline and landed on lawn equipment like rakes or hoes or shovels? That happened. But kids... Kids are very, very pliable and flexible. So, yeah, they still get hurt. But they're good. They heal quick. 
But there was like a, over a hundred kid fight at this trampoline business. And the reason I, I give you guys the email and phone number is I would like to know, as an adult, how many, like, eight, some 18-year-olds are pretty big nowadays. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're feeding them. I don't know if it's the hormones in the food. So nowadays, you know, squaring up with an 18-year-old, you might be asking for trouble. But let's go uh, 14 and below. How many 14 and below kids could you fight by yourself and win? Like, you would be the last man standing. Because when you get around 14, then it's going to be a little bit tougher. Because the 14-year-olds, there's two ways it could work out. The 14-year-olds are going to be the first to come in and kind of tire you down. And then the, the little, like, 10 and belows. Those are the ones you can take out with just a drop kick or just punch. Just one punch. You, you guys forget that I was the intergender champion of the world. And it was pretty easy sometimes uh, beating women. Oh, uh, man, that was the wrong choice of words. Beating women in a sanctioned event, a boxing, a sporting event, that these women signed up for and signed waivers on. So... It's not like I'm a woman abuser, because I'm not. But I, I, I think I could easily take 30 and under when it comes to uh, 14 and under. So I'm saying about 30, 14 and under when it comes to age with kids. Because I would have just been laying out these little bastards at this trampoline park. And I know, look, I'm not saying beat them to death. But just give them a good smacking. A lot of these kids nowadays, if you just give them a little backhand slap, they're out for the they're out for the count. Two days after she recorded jarring video of a brawl at a trampoline park in Tampa. This escalated very quickly. This mother says it's still jarring to watch. They were all having fun. And then when this lady said, oh, my God, and I turn around to look, they're fighting on the right side. I was talking about my mom with this. We, we were watching a movie that talked about Lord of the Flies. I forget what it was. Huh. Oh, uh, Silver Linings Playbook with uh, Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence. They brought up a Lord of the Flies reference. I was like, why, why hasn't that movie been like remade? Because I, I really do at times hate remakes. But I, uh, that is a remake that I would not, like, hate. I would actually go and see that. But if, if you look at this video, you know, I mean, just Google trampoline fight in Tampa. I mean, this straight up looked like a scene from Lord of the Flies. Like, they were fighting over that conch shell. And there was even l some little fat kids that was like that, that piggy kid, the one that they made fun of for being fat and obese. It wasn't even possible to, to be on a, a, a deserted island and still be fat after you've been there for, I don't know, a year or so. That kid had a stash of candy on him, and he wasn't, like, cutting any of the other kids in on it. Everybody else is starving. Everybody else has got diarrhea from eating coconuts on a daily basis. I mean, it would have been good for the fat little kid they called Piggy in the movie uh, Lord of the Flies or the book to be eating some of that coconut. Because, you know, a good stomach bug where you crap your brains out or puke your brains out is one of the best, perfect ways to start a diet. Get rid of all that water weight. Yeah. See, that, that's the type of remake that I would have and Lord of the Flies. The kids, because they, they end up killing uh, the piggy kid that's fat and obese. What if they kill him in the remake because they find his candy stash? Because that little bastard didn't lose a bit of weight the whole time he was on the island before they killed him. Sandra Bermudez says this unfolded while she was at Sky Zone on Adamo Drive with her nine-year-old son Saturday. She's not sure what started the fight, but it quickly got out of control as she recorded with her cell phone. Bermudez was scared for her much smaller son. <laughs> I See, this, this is why I need to be a reporter. Because as soon as this mom told me that she was scared, 
scared for her younger son that was nine years old, maybe 10. I, I forget. I was kind of zoning out there if I'm just being honest. But I'm saying that word way too much. I got to cut that out of my dialect. My my uh, thesaurus of words that I have in my brain because I, I am using that way too much, if I can be honest. But if this bitch was so scared uh, for the safety of her kid, I'm just being honest, I had to get one more out there. Uh, why are you filming it and not jumping in the middle? Even as a woman, you could be taking out little 9 and 10-year-olds. Without a problem. So you must have not have been that scared. Matter of fact, your kid might have started it. Maybe this was a plan to to get Instagram famous, TikTok famous, Twitter famous. Hell, any social media famous. You must have not have been that scared for the well-being of your, your nine-year-old son. Because you're filming. I mean, be a lioness. Protect your cub. Even if it's a, <laughs> a, a another kid. Take that little mother effer out. Do whatever you got to do pr to protect your cub. Oh, very. I thought he was going to get hurt. According to Hillsborough deputies, the melee involved about 200 kids, mostly teenagers. And I know it's got to be a bad look. But would you guys be okay for a uh, sheriff's officer to deploy the flying fish hook tasers and, and put some voltage and this, these little bastards, uh, young bodies. I don't think I got no, I, I don't have any problem with it. I, I've had it done to me quite a bit. And you would think with all the uh, alcohol abuse and drugs I've done, that it would have killed me. These kids have got way better hearts. They're fresh, young hearts. So I think that would be okay. I mean, would, I, I know it would be a bad look. And I know that the news would be like, oh, my God, sheriff's department, tasers, a little kid. No, you give him a warning. You put that red little dot right on his chest and you and you just deploy the uh, the fish hook and take that kid down. And that's one of those uh, 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 that'll learn you moments. And I bet this little kid would never act out again because they'd be like, oh, sheriff's department. And I sounded like Rick Ross here. Huh. But, yeah, the, these kids would definitely learn a little bit of a lesson if you did light them up with the flying fish hooks. Sky Zone security can be seen trying to intervene. The business closed early to move everyone outside, and Bermudez continued rolling as the fight continued in the parking lot. Deputies can be seen responding late in the video. We're told they briefly detained and released one child, but made no arrests. What about rubber bullets or mace? Are you, are you not allowed to use any non-lethal like tools to be able to break this bitch up like mace pepper spray it's not gonna kill him rubber bullets tear gas on these young adults i know a lot of you guys are saying that i'm shock shocking but no i'm not they, these are all things if you want to act like an adult you're going to get treated like one i think that this would have been easier um to control if more parents had been there because the kids were all unsupervised. It's unclear if anyone was seriously hurt. This mom is just glad her young son wasn't. I tried to use it as a, an opportunity to teach him. If this ever happens in the future, the first thing you need to do is pull your waist up from the crowd. She just hopes they'll never be in this situation again here or anywhere else. In Tampa, Aaron Mesmer, Fox 13 News. Anyways, like I said, I bet you're, I bet you're going to see a lawsuit. You're, you're definitely going to see a lawsuit come out of this. I'm sure she's not the only parent that really didn't care about the safety of their kid and just filmed it. They're like, oh, man, and see the dollar sign. Ding, ding. It's like doing a Twitch live stream, just getting bits in left and right. Every little punch that's thrown and the longer it goes on, they're just seeing the dollar signs add up. Anyways, guys, going to get out of here. Make sure you check out my interview that I did with uh, on Rock Riley show. Well, I didn't do it. I was a guest on the Rock Stop Here podcast. It's available on iTunes. Check it out. Just search the Rock Stops Here. It was a great interview, and I, and I think you guys will enjoy it. If you get a chance, go check out ianhannahomes.com if you're in the market to buy or sell a home or you know somebody 
Check out my good friend Ian Hanna at ianhannahomes.com. Hope you guys have a great day. Hope you enjoyed today's show, and I will talk to you tomorrow. And that's the show for today. Thanks for listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hey, don't be a dickhead. Do us a favor. Like, share, and subscribe to the show. Also, check out the Tuttle category at 315live.com. The Tuttle Daily Podcast is brought to you by Starfire Transport, StitchYouUp.com, and PocketPairClub.com. Special thanks to show producer Vulture and co-host Sirach. Show voiceover service is brought to you by jcvoiceover.com and The Little Cheese Show. Download and subscribe to The Little Cheese Show everywhere podcasts are found. If you want to help support the show, go to paypal.me slash Tuttle on the radio. You have something you want to say? Tuttle at gmail.com or leave a voicemail at 407-270-3044. To follow all Tuttle social media, go to Tuttle.net. That's Tuttle with two Ds dot net. Thanks again for all your support, and we'll see you tomorrow on the Tuttle Daily Podcast. I get ignorant in normal situations. What? What you mean? What the fuck you mean? What, what are you talking about? Nigga, what the fuck is you talking about? Oh, shit.